As the cool night air brushed against my face, I found myself standing at the top of a staircase that seemed to burrow deep into the heart of the earth itself. Hey friends, you won't believe what I've just unearthed from the depths below. Only moments before, my pickaxe had sung the sweet melody of success, striking against stone and revealing the gleaming, unmistakable sparkle of diamonds. Today's adventure, I explained, is one I'm sure you've all been eagerly awaiting. The anticipation was palpable, even through the digital divide. With a bounce in my step, I hopped out of the staircase's embrace, finding myself under the watchful gaze of the full moon. Its silver light bathed the world in a serene glow, a stark contrast to the darkness below. But what lay before me was neither serene nor inviting. An odd, abandoned house stood in the silence of the night, its silhouette a dark blot against the moonlit landscape. Cobwebs clung to its corners and crevices, a testament to the time it had spent untouched, uncared for. It was as if the house itself was watching, waiting. I approached the front yard, the grass crunching softly under my boots. The house loomed larger as I neared, its windows like empty eyes staring back at me. As I stood there, my eyes caught sight of something chilling. Skulls and skeletons scattered across the earth, their empty gazes locked in an eternal stare. A shiver raced up my spine, not from the cool night air, but from the realization that I was standing in a place where many stories had ended. The sight of blood, dark and ominous, stained the ground, painting a tale of untold horrors. With each step, the darkness seemed to grow thicker, swallowing up the light. I knew I needed to see more, to understand what secrets this house was hiding. So I placed torches along my path, their warm glow piercing the shadows. As the light spread, more skulls came into view, each one sending a silent warning. Something was very off, and the air seemed to thicken with each torch I placed. Driven by a mixture of fear and curiosity, I made my way to the back of the house. The torches flickered, as if hesitant to reveal what lay in the darkness. What was wrong with this place? The question echoed in my mind with every torch I placed. The answer, it seemed, was hidden just beyond the reach of the light. As I approached the entrance, the air felt charged, as if the house itself was bracing for my intrusion. Peering inside, I could barely make out the shapes in the dark. But then, there it was. A figure, barely discernible in the gloom. It looked weird, not like anything I'd seen before. The darkness cloaked its features, making it impossible to see clearly, but I could feel its gaze, heavy and unblinking, fixed upon me. As I stood there on the threshold of the unknown, my heart pounded in my chest, trying to steady my breath. The stories, the rumors about this place, they all seemed to come alive in this moment. What was this figure and what did it want? The darkness hid, not just it, but the answers to my questions. I hesitated, unsure of my next move. The house, with all its secrets and shadows, seemed to be waiting for my decision. Would I dare to step inside, to uncover the truth that lay within its walls? I've decided to go in. Gently pushing the front door open, I stepped inside. Immediately, I began placing torches around me, their light piercing the darkness and revealing the chaos within. And there, in the midst of the shadows and light, was Bluey. But this was not the friend I remembered. Covered in blood, she darted around the room frantically, her movements erratic, almost possessed. Fear gripped me, a cold hand around my heart. I turned and ran, darting into room after room, seeking a place to hide. Despite my efforts to remain unseen, Bluey continued her frenzied pacing, her presence filling every space with tension. As I placed more torches, trying to make sense of what had happened to her, a deep sadness mingled with my fear. This wasn't the Bluey I knew. I weaved through the rooms, a silent game of hide and seek, playing out in the heart of chaos. Yet despite my attempts to understand and analyze, the truth remained shrouded in mystery. How do you help a friend who has become a stranger, lost in a darkness so profound? Eventually, finding no answers and with my heart pounding like a drum, I made my way back to the entrance and slipped outside. As the door closed behind me with a soft thud, silence fell. Then suddenly, I felt Bluey's gaze upon me. She was standing at the door, her eyes locked on mine. 
It was a moment frozen in time, a silent confrontation between what was and what had become. I have to help her. This is not the Bluey I remember. Something has changed her, and I need to find out what. With a heavy heart, I turned and fled into the night, my mind racing with plans and possibilities. How could I save my friend from this nightmare? The urgency propelled me forward. What could have caused such a drastic change in my friend? My mind racing with thoughts of how to help Bluey. And as the first light of dawn began to paint the sky with hues of pink and orange, I arrived at another house. This one was strikingly different, painted in bright shades of orange. This was Bingo's house. As I stood there, catching my breath, I knew that this was just the beginning. The journey to save Bluey would take me down paths untrodden and through mysteries dark and deep. But I was ready. For friendship, for Bluey, I would face whatever came my way. I think I know who can help us. Determination lighting up my face. We're going to see Bingo. Without wasting another moment, I pushed open the front door to Bingo's house, my steps quick with urgency. Bingo was in her backyard, tending to her garden in the calm morning light. As I approached, the weight of the situation bore down on me, but I knew I had to tell her everything. I came to you because something's terribly wrong. I began, recounting the night's eerie events and how Bluey, her sister, was in grave danger. The look on Bingo's face turned from surprise to deep concern as she listened to my tale. Without hesitation, she agreed to help, her worry for Bluey evident in her eyes. We sat down, brainstorming what could be done, the morning sun casting long shadows around us. It wasn't long before Bingo had a plan. I think I know how we can save her, she said confidently. I nodded, ready to do whatever it took to bring Bluey back to herself. We talked brainstorming what could be done, casting about for any solution that might bring Bluey back from the brink. Then, with a clarity that cut through the despair, Bingo outlined a plan. It was daring, fraught with uncertainty, but it was a chance, a chance to save Bluey. Signaling my agreement without hesitation. Let's do it, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Together, we went back inside her house, gathering a few necessary items before heading out. The journey back to Bluey's house was silent, each of us lost in our thoughts, preparing for what was to come. Together, we were stronger, and this plan, however risky, was our beacon of hope. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were about to embark on something monumental. As Bluey's once familiar home came into view, Bingo gasped, taken aback by the state of disarray and darkness that surrounded it. We must do something my voice firm with resolve. We can't let Bluey remain lost in whatever nightmare has taken hold of her. Bluey had always been there for us, and now it was our turn to be there for her. With Bingo's plan, we had a chance to make things right, to bring back the friend we knew and loved. The journey ahead would be fraught with challenges, but in that moment, inside Bingo's home, surrounded by the familiarity of friendship, I felt a surge of courage. Together, we would face the unknown, armed with a plan and the unbreakable bonds of friendship. Saving Bluey was our mission, and we were ready to do whatever it took to bring her home. With a cobblestone in hand, I led the way to the front door. The plan was simple, but would require timing and courage. Gently pushing the door open, I placed the cobblestone in front of it, ensuring that once we were inside, Bluey couldn't follow us out giving us time to find a way to save her from the dark spell she was under. As I stepped back, looking at the cobblestone barrier, a mix of hope and fear filled me. This was it, the first step in our mission to save Bluey. With Bingo by my side, I felt a renewed strength. Together, we were determined to face whatever lay ahead to bring back the Bluey we knew and loved. After revealing the dire state of Bluey to Bingo, I saw worry etch deep lines across her face. She glanced at me, a spark of determination in her eyes, and said, follow me, I have a solution. Trusting her completely, I followed Bingo as we made the long journey back to her house. The night stretched on, and by the time we arrived, the first light of dawn was breaking across the horizon, painting the sky in shades of pink and orange. Bingo led me straight to a room where a brewing stand sat, its stone base cold to the touch but promising the warmth of hope. 
I understood then what Bingo had in mind. A potion, a special kind of cure for what ailed Bluey. My heart lifted at the thought that we might be able to save her after all. I opened a nearby chest, its contents meticulously organized and ready for use. Inside I found everything we needed. Three water bottles, nether wart, a golden melon and gunpowder. With careful hands, I gathered these items. My mind focused on the task ahead. At the brewing stand, I placed the three water bottles into the slots, the glass clinking softly in the quiet room. The first step was to use the nether wart. As I dropped it into the brewing stand, a thick bubbling potion began to form, the base for what would become our hope to save Bluey. After adding the golden melon to the brewing stand, I watched intently as the potion transformed once again. These potions are going to be very interesting, I remarked, a mix of hope and curiosity in my voice. The next step was crucial. I added the gunpowder, observing as the potion of healing became something even more powerful, two splash potions of healing. I glanced at Bingo, seeking reassurance. Will this really work? I asked, the weight of our mission pressing down on me. Bingo met my gaze, her confidence unwavering. Trust me, she said firmly. There's only one way to find this potion, this vaccine, it was more than just a mixture of ingredients. It was a symbol of our refusal to give up on our friend. Bingo and I shared a look, a silent agreement that no matter what lay ahead, we were in this together. The journey to save Bluey was fraught with unknowns, but with this potion, we had a chance. A chance to fight the darkness, to bring back the friend we knew and loved. As the potion completed its transformation, I couldn't help but feel a mix of anticipation and fear, I admitted. But above all, I felt a surge of hope. With this potion, we were one step closer to saving Bluey. Our journey was far from over, but together we would face whatever came our way. For Bluey, for our friendship, we would not back down. As we approached the front door, we could see Bluey trying to escape her own house, her movements desperate. I looked to Bingo, signaling, that I was about to throw the potion. There's no other way, she confirmed, her voice steady despite the tension of the moment. Taking a deep breath, I hurled the potions at Bluey. The bottles shattered on impact, releasing a burst of healing energy. Bluey's head spun in madness, ease a vivid red, a clear sign of pain and confusion. But then, as the potion took effect, a miraculous change occurred. Her eyes slowly returned to their normal color, the madness fading away as her true self emerged from the chaos. With a heart full of relief, I quickly broke the cobblestone barrier and called out to Bluey, Come outside, you're fine. The sunlight illuminating her face, it was clear. Bluey was herself again, healed by the power of our splash potions. A smile of triumph on my face, I couldn't help but feel a sense of accomplishment. Thank you everyone for watching, my voice filled with gratitude. We had faced the darkness of Bluey's house at 3am and emerged victorious. Our friendship 